All right, well, um, this is not my, my usual environment. We're making a quick video in a bathroom. And this is my solution to a repair that I had to make on this wall. The towel bar that was here previously was the standard um, aluminum, brushed aluminum, nickel uh, towel bar that you'd get at Lowe's or Home Depot. And it was put in the wall by the builder with um, the little plastic uh, drywall inserts and over time it got loose and accidentally someone pulled it off the wall and left uh, several big holes and I'll roll in some pictures of the holes and the repair and once I got the wall repaired and painted that's a whole other story um, there was a slight sheen difference once I did the patch and painting and I ended up having to paint, paint the whole wall but I wanted something more uh, sturdy and um, um, something a little nicer. And the trim in this bathroom is primarily hickory. So I got a piece of hickory from a uh, lumber yard in Portland. I planed it down and you'll see some footage of that um, after this little intro. And I made this shelf and uh, towel bar. Now the neat thing is in Central Oregon, I'm in Sisters right now, there's a wonderful uh, place called Ponderosa Forge and they make custom um, wrought iron. And I went in, they um, sell as a stock item a wrought iron towel bar. When I went in there, unfortunately they only had the bracket but didn't have the bar. When he measured it, he said, you know, the bar is going to be a little bit short. If you want to come back later in the day, we'll custom make the bar. And, um, well, that's what I did. And I literally went back um, mid-afternoon, and they had it complete, ready to go for me. And just something very cool about uh, local craftspeople that can do work like that and then do custom work, and they did not charge me to make the custom bar. I'll give you a little close-up of that. But I think this will be a nice, sturdy, but very nice looking addition to this bathroom and hopefully will eliminate um, pulling this off the wall. I can tell you it's pretty sturdy. So anyway, we'll uh, take a quick look at this. And one of the reasons I did not document this all the way through, I thought this would be a great, simple woodshop project. And I started off documenting every step I've never worked with hickory before and I ran into a couple little problems that I wasn't used to and I think next time around I've got another project for this wall. Um, I learned some things and I'll show you a close up of some mistakes that I made and how I fixed them and after a while it just got too complicated fixing mistakes and videotaping. So anyway this is the finished project and you'll see some beginning footage of how I got from the uh, hickory plank to this. I got this hickory from Crosscut here in Portland. They have a wonderful selection of hardwoods, but uh, it was very inexpensive. This whole uh, set, two boards, um, actually Beth picked it up for me. They had to cut it in half so she could uh, carry it in her car, but it's, it's actually going to work out perfect because I only need 30 inches on each piece. It was only $19. The uh, wood detail and cabinets in our house is hickory, so this would be a good match, but uh, it's a beautiful wood with uh, some wonderful grain. I'm going to feature this uh, surface. I looked at this side, and uh, this just has a little bit more heartwood, and the same with this piece down here. And I'll likely trim this knot out, because that'll be a little difficult to, uh, to plane. Right now I'm going to thickness plane and um, cut this to final dimension, 30 inches long and um, 8 inches wide for the back and uh, 6 inches for the shelf. And then I will also make some corbels out of the extra wood if I have enough. If not, I have some mahogany that might be a nice detail. And I'll show you how I made those corbels.
Okay, the next thing we need to do is get the uh, get the profile for the curve on here. I'm going to have a, a fairly big sweep on the top with a narrow sweep on the bottom and then a, a, sh a wider, shallower sweep on the inside. I'm going to use a paint can to give me that first sweep. And we're just going to put about half the can and we're just going to draw that circle. And if this doesn't work, you know, you can always just peel this label off and start again. Now for the smaller one, I have a smaller paint can. And again, I'll just take half the can. We'll just draw a sweeping arc. And now to connect these two arcs with a shallower arc, I'm just going to use a bigger can. In this case, this is a can of shellac. I'll line up those two arcs. And then we'll strike this line right here. So that'll be the curve of this shelf support right along this line here. I'm just going to erase this line so I don't get confused. We'll take this over to the bandsaw. We'll make some cuts in like this. These are called relief cuts. And then my job will be to cut just to the outside of this edge, just along here like that. And then we'll take this to the oscillating drum sander and we will finish sand and fare this curve to the line. Then we'll peel off the paper and separate the pieces and we're good to go. This has a nice um, little shelf here and um, I think it looks real nice with this Yankee candle. This is one of our favorite scents for this little house, balsam and cedar. And um, well here is the wrought iron towel bar and that just is absolutely beautiful and it's a rubbed wax finish and they even make their own uh, bolts. Now let's look right over there, you'll see one of my mistakes. This whole shelf is put together with tapered dowels and uh, when I set the dowels to hold this support in place after it was glued up and I released the clamps I heard a crack and right there it split. Well you'll notice along in here there are some dark pitch pockets in the hickory and what I ended up doing and I think unless I pointed it out you wouldn't really notice it too bad but I filled this with a colored epoxy and made it look like a pitch pocket on end and I think it, I think it, uh, it does pretty well with that. The other thing I did is there was an inclusion pocket here and right there and what I decided to do was to leave those in place and actually let that be on the face because I think it adds a lot of character and I did the typical little trick of uh, applying one pound cut shellac and then I filled it with colored epoxy, scraped it smooth. You'll see some video of that and then with the finish it turned out really nice. Now the finish on this is 50-50 uh, original Waterlux with naphtha and uh, there's eight coats and it's rubbed out and then waxed. 
Now there's one more little mistake. So this happened on both these supports and I had to fill that one as well and then scrape it uh, flush. But it turned out really well. And the last little detail are polished walnut plugs and they are um, again coated with shellac and then two coats of the Waterlux naphtha finish and then buffed out with wax.